Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to the channel. So today I thought it would be fun to do a sit down talk that I have been wanting to do for quite some time. So let me just preface this video by saying I know that my past has shaped who I am today in so many profound and amazing ways. So I am by no means regretful of my past mistakes or missteps. I have grown to be very grateful and thankful for every step of the life journey that I've been on and how it has shaped me into who I am. That being said, I am wanting this video to be something that I would have loved to watch myself as a 20-something, especially in my early 20s. So I'm kind of making this video not just for people in their 20s and younger, but for any age at any stage of life because I think it could possibly benefit you. So I actually realized this would be the perfect video to listen to with a friend or a loved one or to send to a friend or loved one and then talk about your answers afterwards because it's really a great conversation starter. Like I said, if you're going on a long road trip or you just want to break the ice with somebody, this would be a super fun way to do it. So I hope you guys enjoy. And also, I would love to hear what you guys would have done differently or what you know now or what you do now that you wish you would have done at an earlier stage or age of your life. So pop it in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. So I heard this saying that Dusty told me, someone was asked who their hero was and they said, me in 10 years. And I thought that was a really cool perspective because Dusty and I both have always struggled with identity once we let go of looking for that perfect figure to look up to or aspire to and once we found it within we began to step into our own at a much quicker rate and we began to go much deeper so let me just give that to you guys if you're looking for an idol or a hero just picture who you would like to see yourself being in 10 years rather than trying to emulate somebody else. Jumping right into my top 10 things I wish I would have known or done in my 20s that I know and do now. Number one is clean skincare. So I actually went through so many different phases with my skin. I went from having very oily, acne prone skin to having dry, flaky combination skin. And now being in my 30s, I am struggling with sunspots, hyperpigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, all of the things that happen when you start to age. And I'm not trying to reverse aging as much as I am to age gracefully. So something I think would have been beneficial was to have a holistic, clean, yet effective skincare regime back in my 20s. So rather than buying inexpensive products from the drugstore or products that are laden with fillers and chemicals, I wish I would have known about Osea Malibu earlier on. So I've mentioned them in several videos and on my social media lately because I have been a religious user for about the past six months or so. I started using them in the early fall regularly, like morning, noon, and night, and I've been seeing such amazing results that I couldn't help but bring them up again because this is seriously like the most important thing is good skincare. And sometimes you take it for granted when you're in your 20s and then moving into your 30s, you wish you would have taken care sooner. My absolute favorite product of theirs has always been their Undaria Algae Body Oil because it's not only amazing for your face, but your entire body. So the whole family uses this and it is, like I said, super, super clean and highly effective. It is so moisturizing and hydrating and nourishing. I use their toner, their face wash, exfoliants for my face and then a separate one for my body. I've got a couple face masks that I use a couple times a week, their moisturizer, the AHA that's brand new that's fantastic for turning over cell growth and giving your skin a more refreshed glow. I also cannot tell you how much the Hyaluronic C Serum has helped me with the plumping and kind of reducing fine lines and wrinkles. They have the perfect lineup. Everything's made in USA and it is super, super clean seaweed based skincare so check them out let me know what you guys think if you've used them or what products you might be interested in I might actually do like a whole skincare routine video just because I love them so much so I felt so much more comfortable in my own naked skin since using Osea it's been incredible so if I would have known that in my 20s I maybe would have been a little bit more confident in my skin so that's always been a big thing for me I've been self-conscious about freckles and moles and wrinkles and fine lines. If you guys are interested in checking out OC 
see a Malibu, I highly recommend it. You can click the link in the description below. There's also a discount code for you guys down there. Number two, I wish I would have known how much I would love motherhood. So babies, kids, I love them so much since becoming a mom. I wish I would have known earlier on in my 20s because I was kind of too cool and I thought I'm never gonna be a mom. As soon as you have kids, you have to buy a minivan, you can't travel, you can't do anything fun. And that has been quite the opposite. We have traveled more. I have found felt more myself since having kids than any time else in my life. I feel like I've fully blossomed into who God has made me to be. I feel like I did so much worrying and trying to stay away and pushing away from having kids that when I just kind of let go and gave up the control and things happened naturally for Dusty and I, we didn't really try for Max or Liv. They both happen very just naturally, like I said. Nine months of pregnancy were scary just because I did so much future tripping and I was coming from a fear-based place, but once I got past that and actually gave birth, everything flipped in an instant and motherhood has been amazing. Our children are so beautiful and wonderful and I wish I could have 10 more. I think one of the best things about being a mom is I get to relive my youth and my childhood again. Even simple things like building a fort or making a fun recipe together, things that are kind of new to them, just makes life more interesting and more exciting. They say the cutest things. Max is kind of like a mini me and Liv is like a mini Dusty. Our house feels so alive and so full even though there are times that are stressed and strained. I I think having babies is not something to be feared, but something to fully embrace. Number three, something I wish I would have done in my 20s is to love myself more, especially physically. I think the biggest thing that has helped me to recognize that is just to see myself through God's eyes and to know that he created me to be who I am. Nobody else is like me, so why try to be like somebody else? He made me exactly who he wanted me to be to fulfill a very specific role in this world, in this plane of existence. I know I'm going to look back at photos, videos, especially everything being so well documented, and I'm going to wish that I would have embraced my body and who I am inside and out now because when I'm older, I probably will have more aches and pains and more fine lines and wrinkles and I will have gone through more difficult things in my life so I think to really embrace where you're at now even if you're not exactly where you want to be say if you're trying to lose weight or get healthier and you're not exactly happy with where you're at right now I think meeting yourself where you're at is super important so love yourself as you are mind body spirit mentally, emotionally, and physically. So speaking of loving your body, number four is you don't have to kill yourself in the gym to get the results that you want. So maybe if you are trying to change yourself for the better, maybe you're trying to get in better physical shape, something that I have learned the hard way is that you don't have to overdo it to get good results, to get into the best shape of your life. I think more of it has to do with what you're eating. I have gone through several different phases where I have over-exercised in an attempt to achieve a certain look and it has only left me depleted and drained. It depleted my adrenals, it left me with aches and pains and injuries. I was also trying to restrict calories to further get to a certain point with my body and it just ended up affecting me in so many negative ways and I have now come to realize that I don't have to run for miles on end and I don't have to jump and bounce around so hard and do these crazy workouts to get to where I want to be. In fact, I've actually realized now the training that I'm doing is helping me so much more because I'm able to lift heavy weights, which is great for your bone mass and density. It's great for your hormonal health and you're not having to overtax yourself. And I'm able to really see results. I'm feeling stronger. I'm looking more toned than I ever have before in my life. My stomach is flatter than it's ever been. I'm getting a little bit of a booty. I'm able to pick up and tote my kids around and I just feel strong and powerful and empowered. Even doing yoga every day on our Costa Rica retreats, I felt amazing and I felt like 
When I was working out super hard, I would also have such a ravenous appetite that I was eating so much volume that it didn't matter if I was exercising. And exercise honestly is only gonna burn 100 or 200 calories, maybe 300 if you're lucky. So when you really look at that versus like what you're eating, it's not making that much of a difference. So it's better to just relax into your workouts a little bit more and be more mindful about the muscle groups you're working and focus on those to get the results you want rather than just killing yourself. Next up, I wish I would have gone plant-based sooner. So I did go plant-based in my 20s. It's been over seven years that I've been 100% whole foods plant-based and vegan but I wish I would have done it earlier on because I went through so many health scares. I'll link our video below talking about our vegan before and after story and some of the things I went through, but I wish I would have known earlier on, especially because it healed me from a lot of scary symptoms that reversed, but also from that diet and exercise mentality that I was just talking about. If I would have known that more of my physical fitness would have come from what I was doing in the kitchen as opposed to what I was doing in the gym, I would have put my efforts there instead because food's amazing, right? We have to eat every single day. We don't have to exercise, but we have to eat to stay alive. So just having more healthy tools under my belt would have helped a ton. I wish that I would have had something like our eMove Rest meal planner and our eBooks, for example. They're so easy. There's so many tools like at our fingertips now that can help us to very easily slide into a plant-based diet and do it successfully. Amazing recipes that are transitional. So if you guys haven't already, definitely check out our meal planner. It will help you so, so much. One other thing I'll say on that note with the plant-based diet is that a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. So when I started focusing on getting healthy, I was buying things like lean cuisines at the grocery store simply because I was looking for the lowest amount of calories um, and honestly, that's gonna be also the lowest amount of nutrition most of the time, and I still wasn't achieving my goals. And then when I switched to eating high raw, whole foods, low fat, plant-based, I was able to eat almost, honestly you guys, I eat double the calories than I was eating before, but I still am maintaining my weight. So I'm seeing better results. I'm able to enjoy food in abundance as opposed to in a mind state of restriction. The next thing I wish I would have done in my 20s is to invest in myself. So what I mean by that is I went straight from high school to college and I was so busy every single day between academics and sports and extracurriculars and homework so I felt like my life was so preoccupied that I wasn't truly focusing on what my interests were as much as I was just like, I had my blinders on and I would study and survive. And I wish I would have invested in myself more. And I felt like I was one of those kids who really wasn't mature enough to go to make the jump straight from high school to college. Part of me wanted to go to a really big university with lots of people, and the other part of me wanted to go to like an intimate little Christian college somewhere that I wouldn't be as distracted. And I think the social butterfly in me won out and I ended up at a big university here in Nebraska, basically floundering. I felt like I was just one amongst many in a school of fish and I just kind of felt drowned out. Again, I was just going through the motions rather than finding myself. And now I know that I would have been one of those people that would have benefited from a gap year, if you want to call it that. I wish I would have taken a year off to travel and see the world and just see where life took me, see what I was drawn to and interested in, what kind of hobbies and skills I might develop or pick off pick up on, what kind of people I might meet around the world. I really, really think that would have benefited me. There's actually a girl coming on next year's Costa Rica retreat who just signed up and she's actually just graduating from high school this year. So she's been waiting a couple years to join us and she's super excited and she's going to be going into a field similar to us and she's been super inspired by us and she wants to come and learn and see how we do what we do. And I love that and I wish I would have had that when I was her age. So the retreats will be linked below as as well if you guys might be interested in checking that out it's never too late to invest in yourself that's another thing it doesn't have to be when you're in your 20s you know I think it's really important to invest in yourself however you need to one of the best pieces of advice I've heard recently is if you're experiencing burnout the best thing you can do is basically get back to the basics so what are your needs your food <laughs> 
your fitness and your rest, all things eat, move, rest. So if you can get back to those and dial those in, it can help you to get really clear about doing a lot of that inside work and truly finding yourself so you can invest in what you need to become who you were created to be. I think that will also help you to find your tribe, something I wish that I would have done earlier on. If I would have done something like our retreat, I would have found my tribe sooner. Next up, something that I really embrace now that I wish I would have embraced in my 20s is my spirituality and my faith. So I did grow up Catholic. Then I fell off the wagon when I got to college and it just became something that was put on the back burner. It definitely just wasn't something that I felt like I was going to do on my own. So I felt like my parents kind of forced me to in high school and I kind of, you know, gave them the eye roll, but I wish I would have stuck with, with it and invested in my faith and spirituality for my own sake. So thankfully when I got together with Dusty, he kind of also felt that way and we started going to church together and we started doing classes together. We started seeking out um, different courses and things we could do, um, series we could watch to kind of grow together in that way and now it's been so important to me and so critical to my um, mental health mostly, um, helping me deal with anxiety and panic attacks and all the kind of stuff I struggled with way back when. I think finding God, finding Jesus, has helped me so tremendously and a big part of that also recently in the past four years has been in Costa Rica on our retreats where we are so disconnected from devices and so plugged into nature so I think that would be an important part of it too is like finding God in the beauty of his creation um, in the natural world so there's this phrase that goes I would rather be on a mountaintop thinking about Jesus than in church thinking about a mountaintop so I think that's really true. And I did feel so connected to God when we were in nature, doing barefooting, doing forest bathing on our hikes, jumping off of waterfalls, sun gazing, just breathing in the fresh air and drinking the clean water. And it just made me feel so good to know that I didn't need so many things to fulfill my happiness in my heart. We all have a God-shaped hole and a lot of times we're trying to fill it and stuff it with stuff when all we really need is right in front of us and it's so free and accessible. Next one, I wish I would have been more open and honest and upfront with my parents. So I came from the type of family that it was kind of like sweep things under the rug or kind of hush when it comes to things like puberty and sex and all of that and I had the hardest time. I was a quiet person, I was super shy, I was kind of a bookworm, not very social, and I was a late bloomer so it was just a bad combination. <laughs> and it was really difficult for me because I was super uncomfortable talking about the stuff that I had questions about. Even with my friends, I didn't have a whole lot of friends, so I was really scared and freaked out when it came time every year to do like the whole sex ed talk. It didn't apply to me. Girls would be excited because they are starting to wear a bra or they got their periods and I was just mortified. I hadn't gotten there yet, so it was just terrifying to me and I knew I wasn't going to be excited. And I was right. <laughs> I was the last girl to shave my legs, the last to wear a sports bra, the last to kiss a boy, the last to do a lot of things. I just wanted to be a kid forever because I had such a fun and amazing childhood and growing up just freaked me out. And I think if I would have been more open and honest with my parents about some of my fears, then maybe I would have been more open and honest with them about some of the bigger things later on, like when it came to alcohol and anxiety and feelings of depression and stress and panic attacks like I had in college. I think if I would have originally been more open with them, then a lot of these things wouldn't have piled up because I felt like I did a lot of stuffing those feelings that weren't being addressed. So I cannot stress this enough. If you are young, if you're still living at home, just be open and honest with your parents because they're going to be more than willing to listen and offer a, a helping hand because they've been there and done that. Even though we think our parents don't know our lives, trust me, they do. And moving forward with Max and Liv and any future children we have. I'm just really wanting us to live in an open environment. Dusty really values communication, so I've really learned the value in open communication. So even when it's difficult, it's so much better, and I feel such a sense of relief when we do talk about the difficult things.
and the good things too. So be open with your parents. Number nine, we are almost done you guys. So this is a really big one that I actually kicked another one off the list for because this seemed more important to me. So positive mindset or PMA, positive mental attitude. So this is something that I've struggled with my entire life. I feel like there are some people who at least they come off appearing like it, it's effortless for them to be positive and happy-go-lucky, but I know a handful of people like this who it just seems like it comes easily for them. Even Dusty has said he feels like he's more wired towards the positive, where I tend to be kind of a pessimist and not really, I don't know, I don't like to say Debbie Downer, <laughs> but I definitely let my fears and my worries, my frustrations come out and get the best of me. So today is a rainy, gloomy, cold day and it's driving me nuts. It's driving Dusty nuts. And what I've realized is that thoughts are the seed. And once you plant that seed, that thought, if you let it become words, also they become actions. So your thoughts become your words, become your actions, and eventually that becomes who you are. So what seeds you're planting in your mind are really important. So I think you really have to try super hard and be proactive if you are wired towards the negative side or you're a pessimist and you do a lot of stinking thinking. Dusty has told me a great way to combat it is to not practice thought stopping because we can never really fully control our thoughts. It's kind of like trying to control the traffic or the weather. Whereas instead of going out into the middle of the street where you get hit by cars and get poured on by rain and hail, instead you just step off the, to the curb and observe those thoughts as they pass by, those feelings and emotions. You let them go through in and out of you. And another good thing that can really help is when you think something negative, reverse it with five positive things. So maybe you even speak those things. Like the other day I was on the bike path and I thought something negative. I immediately looked around myself and listed off five things that I was grateful for that I saw and just things in my life that were going well. So I think that can really help and eventually you do create new neural pathways in your brain. So you can actually truly physically rewire your brain. A lot of people don't jive with the word manifest, but I feel like there is something to it. Whether you're praying or just using positive mindset and visualization to achieve the life you want to live, it really helps to bring those things into fruition. The power of the mind is incredible. So one thing I wish I would have done in my 20s is practice better oral hygiene because I have had a handful of cavities that have had to been filled in the past. I just got back from the dentist. I had a cleaning and I haven't had a checkup or a cleaning in years. I got a good report back, so just take care of your teeth. Maybe I'll do a video on that because I get a lot of questions about Dusty and I and how we keep our teeth healthy, how we have such white teeth without using whiteners or white strips. So let us know if you want to see that video because we have so many amazing natural holistic oral hygiene tips and tricks that we do daily. So that's actually 10 you guys, but I have a handful of rapid fire quotes if you want to jot down any that kind of jive with you. Less is more. Quality over quantity. How you do anything is how you do everything. And finally, I'm not for everyone. So what I mean by that is don't let downers get you down. Don't let haters hate because you could be the juiciest, ripest peach in all the land. And there's still going to be that person who just doesn't like peaches. So all you can really control is yourself and what you think of yourself. Love yourself as much as you can because the big man upstairs made you just the way that you are. That doesn't mean don't pursue your goals and where you want to be in your life, but I think it's really, really important to realize you can't control anybody but yourself, so love yourself as much as you possibly can. I hope this helps you guys. Let me know what tip sparked your interest the most or what one you're working on. Until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye guys. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.